You are listening to the On Purpose Podcast, your guide to living a more purposeful life. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's edition of the On Purpose Podcast, where it's our privilege to show up with you each and every week and, and to share stories, ideas, thoughts, personal experiences, those of others with a community that continues to grow each and every week. And it's so humbling to get the messages from people that we're reaching at the right time. And the only way we can do that is to constantly believe these stories are worth sharing. So I want to challenge you all with is remember your story has value. Your story is important and the world needs it or nobody can learn from it. So this week I want to jump into a title called it in the end, it's all blank. And at the end of the show, I'll tell you what I think that word is. But first I want to like tell you where this came from. So get to it here. Andrea and I were traveling from Wyoming to Virginia for some work and we just visited friends in Iowa. And then we realized the Field of Dreams movie site was super close to us. And it had been a bucket list item for me since uh, being a teenager when the movie Field of Dreams came out. And I watched it so many times I could recite the lines of the characters. And I always wanted to be able to visit it and have a catch, as they say in the show, in the outfield. And uh, we were able to do it. Andrew and I had a short drive over there. The three of us with Mr. Otis are playing catch in the outfield. We got our shoes off and that fresh cut baseball grass. Man, life is good. This is exactly the kind of moments we live for, right? The kind that transcend time that you remember the sights and the sounds and the smells of where you were when you, you finally did something you'd always wanted to do. So to make it even a better day, we had another short drive from there to a winery we were going to stay the night at and sample their pizza, which was supposed to be really good. One of our favorite things to do is check out everybody's pizza around the country. So we take off. We feel the dreams is done. We're kind of riding in silence, just soaking in the moment. I have so many thoughts going through my head, you know, of the times I used to watch that movie and who was alive and who who isn't now to see me actually get there and who never got to visit it themselves. And the smells, just reliving it all. So I thought we'd stop and get some gas just in case. We didn't really need it, but just in case. You always like to have a full tank when you're towing your house behind you. And I pull into the small town gas station, the sign, the pricing is green. The hose pump is green, so I don't even think twice on it. That usually indicates diesel, which when you're driving a diesel pickup, you can understand, you'll see why that's important. Fill us up with gas and we're off. Short drive, easy day. Man, this is going to be a day we'll always remember, right? About 20 minutes later, the truck starts chugging and chugging. Not running well. Damn, what the hell is going on, right? We... We sold everything to live this lifestyle, this truck and this Airstream is all we got right now. And we got to get to Virginia. We got work waiting for us. We can't be late. This is not the time to have a vehicle issue. So we keep driving. We're out on some small road in the middle of Iowa. I couldn't even tell people where to find me if I needed to. And I don't even know if cell phones work in this little area. So we keep pressing on. Truck keeps chugging and chugging. I'm like, dang, this isn't good. Andrea looks at me and asks, did you put diesel in the truck? Of course I did, right? I've been doing this for four years. I know diesel from gas. Of course it's diesel. We drive till we get to a major intersection uh, with an interstate. We pull off to the side of the road. I get out and check everything. The hoses are good. The gauges are good. It should be running. What the hell is going on? Now the truck won't even start. Dang it. So here we are a week away from where we have to be in a place we don't know anybody, sitting on a side road with everything we own and we can't move. So I call for our roadside assistance to get a little help. Clearly I pay them every month. They're bound to jump right in and give me a hand. On a Saturday afternoon, after sitting there for about an hour, they call me back and let me know that they can't find a tow truck that can tow our Airstream that we call it a queen. They recommend we lock it up and leave it on the side of the road until Monday when they can get somebody out there. Well, when you're traveling a country with your pickup truck and your Airstream, and that's all you have. That's your house. 
leaving it on the side of the road for two days doesn't seem like a really good idea. Their other option is I can call tow companies myself and submit reimbursement. All right, fair enough. Even though I pay you every month to help me out, I'll do the work. I, I, okay, let's get this done. So I Google tow companies near me. We just happen to be outside Dubuque, Iowa. And the first one that comes up has some great reviews, so I call them. You know, and, and now your frame of mind is, man, the people I just paid to help me every month aren't helping me. Well, how much are these folks going to help me on a Saturday afternoon? I'm sure they got a lot of other things they'd rather be doing than talking to some knucklehead who's broke down on the side of the highway. So I call them, and I'm shocked and surprised. As I was prepared for the worst, maybe get a voicemail or answer machine or some call tree where I gotta push all these numbers to hopefully get to a human, a young lady answered the phone. And after literally maybe two seconds of explaining what happened, she's like, oh, no problem. We'll send two tro tow trucks out to you right away. She asked some specifications on how to tow the Airstream. Said, yep, no problem, we'll have them right out to you. Wow. Wow, right? Like, man, they actually stepped up and, and helped. So I thought, what the hell? I don't know anybody in this town. The truck's going to need to get fixed, clearly. Who should fix it? So I just take a risk. And I ask her, like, hey, do you have any idea of somebody that might be open on a Saturday that could get our truck up and running so we can get back on the road tomorrow? She thinks for a couple seconds, and then she tells her, yeah, West Side Auto here in town. They're closed, but sometimes the owner do not want have much going on. So if you call, he might answer the phone and get you in. What the hell? It's worth it, right? Like I'm in the middle of nowhere. So sure enough, I Google them. The reviews look good. I'm like, okay, this looks like a trustworthy business. And I call them. Again, hopeful, but not really sure how this is going to work out. Call rings twice. Suddenly there's a voice on the other end. What? This can't be, right? Like, this is literally supposed to be my worst moment. I just went from a bucket list, bucket list event to Field of Dreams to now the worst thing I can think possible, broken down on the side of the road in a place I don't know anybody. Wait, wait they're answering the phone. So I tell him what happened, what I'm feeling here, what, what, what I'm hearing from the truck. And he goes, ah, sounds like you put gas in a diesel. I say, wait, what? How could I have done that? Told him the sign was green, the hose was green. He asked me, where'd you get the gas? So I think for a second, pull up my map. I'm like, in this little town. He's like, oh, yeah, that, that gas station puts everything in green, but they don't have diesel. You put gas in your diesel. I'm like, shit. What does that even mean? Right? Like, how bad is this? And then he says, hey, have the tow truck guy bring me your truck. I'll open up. We're going to pump out all the bad gas, clean your filters, fill you back up. You should be fine. What? What? You know what I mean? In my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. I put the wrong gas in my truck. I paid for people to help me that aren't helping. And now suddenly I'm calling random strangers in a place I've never been. They're going above and beyond to open a place that's closed to get me on the road so I can get to where I need to be. This is the best day ever. So we tow the truck in. Andrea gets on the phone. She finds a campground that has two spots left for the night. So she books one. The other tow truck drives us into the campground, backs us into our spot, sets us up. As, as we're pulling into the campground, the campground the loosest forms if you're big into campgrounds. It's not full of trees. It does, doesn't have space where you're in nature. It it looks like a parking lot with trailers right on a river and people are super close and you share your common areas. And most times it would not be a place we'd probably want to stay, to be honest with you. So now as I pull in, I'm like, all right, this is what we have to do. Like if we're, we're on such a good strain of luck right here from an idiotic dis decision I made to now getting help. We'll make do. So as Andrew and I get set up in there, we're both kind of like, okay, this feels, you know, maybe not our best place, but we'll be all right. And then we get to start talking to our neighbors. And they're all Midwest folks. 
and the ones right next to us are telling us how lucky they feel to be in this campground. It's literally their favorite place to go with their summer vacation. I forget what they did for work, but they each got a week off and they would come and camp in this specific campground just because they can back up to the Mississippi River, watch the boats race up and down and the barges go by and it's like they're a little slice of heaven. I thought, man, what a perspective. Here I am thinking we wouldn't normally camp here. Here I am feeling bad for myself. Like, what did I do? I'm such an idiot at times. Then other campers are coming over and they're saying, hey, we noticed you got hauled in by a tow truck. You need a hand with anything. Is there anything we can help you with? Like, wow, look at this, right? The people I paid on the phone couldn't have been less helpful. Yet the people I'm meeting in real life are going out of their way to help. And they're humble, right? And, and a place that Andrew and I normally wouldn't necessarily even want to be is a place that they love to be. It's what they work all summer to get to go to. Like, wow, maybe, maybe I needed a perspective change. Maybe I needed to be humbled a little bit. Shortly after that, I get a call from the, the mechanic. Hey, the truck's good to go. Did what I said. Took it on a half hour drive. You won't have any problems. Do this down the road, clean this out, and you should be good to go. I'm like, all right, sweet. The tow truck driver had left his business car with me and said, hey, you already paid for two tows, so don't pay for an Uber to go get pick up your truck. Give me a call, and I'll come get you. I'm, on, I'm at work till 10 tonight. I go, okay. So I'm thinking, you know, I got another 45-minute drive over to the shop and back. The mechanic says, ah, oh, nah, I'll bring it to you. I got a buddy here. We'll just drive it over to you and drop it off. And again, going above and beyond, like out of their way to help somebody they don't know that would have just been as, just as easily been dismissed as, hey, we're closed. We'll see you on Monday. They delivered the truck to me. Now here we are. I'm recording this. Gosh, at least a month later as we sit on the outer banks of North Carolina trucks running great the rest of the trip went fantastic our class went off without a hitch in virginia even though we dodged hurricane helene amazing stuff right and i think it was all designed to teach me something to remind me that every time i think i have all the answers in life there's new questions i should be thinking about to remind me just because i get to see like some epic views and lakes and mountains and deserts and stuff that a place I immediately thought mm, I wouldn't want to be here is everything to somebody else. And maybe I should stop for a second and see it through their eyes. Maybe it's time for me to be a little more humble, have a little more humility. You see, that's what life does for us. If we're truly paying attention on living, we should never have all the answers. We should always be seeking more questions. So on a crazy day full of highs, lows, laughter, tears, anger, hope, humility, in the end, it all works out just fine. So now is year four of full-time travel and all the stuff we've done in our life. This will be one day that we'll never forget. And it's probably not because of the field of dreams experience. It's because of our breakdown on the side of the road and how we were treated by strangers. So I ask you this week to reflect. When you feel like life is happening to you, stop for a minute and go, wait a second, this is happening for me. What am I supposed to be learning from this situation? What am I supposed to be learning here? Maybe I'm supposed to be giving something. Maybe I'm in a position to be giving and there's somebody out there that's reached out to me that maybe I brushed off or I just didn't make time to or maybe I got a text on my phone I haven't gotten back to or a phone call that I had. should have returned, but I haven't. That really needs me. Maybe they don't need anything great from me. Maybe they just need me to be kind, to be a smile, a greeting. So 
take some time this week and reflect. And make sure you put the right gas in your truck. Have a great week, everybody. I'll talk to you next week. And remember, team, life is far too short to live any other way than on purpose. We'll see you all again next week. Mm-hmm.